world reporting from on board the fun new Veneto Oceanis 34.1 a Mark Lombard design which is already proving to be enjoyable to sail off in light breeze here off Barcelona so I guess this is an entry-level boat for this day and age it starts at 110 thousand euros ex-fat and yeah Benito's already sold out of build slots for it for the whole of 2022 this is the first line version which means it's got the option I mean, this is the first to be built so they they wanted to show all of the different options on it so this is the first line model which means it has the the, the extra bow sprit has the flat deck furler which brings the foot of the sail lower to the deck gives you more sail area has a genoa rather than self-tacking jib here and yeah we've we're now sailing with the code code zero option as well the mast itself stays the same height whether you have the standard version or the or this first line version uh, but you get the difference being you get a square top mainsail uh, so you get more sail area so if you compare this to the old 35.1 you get um, it's basically a little bit only a, it's the same sort of size but um, it's lighter with more sail area so you've managed to save 500 kilos over that old 35 which is not bad given I think that's only four years old now also notice some simple but effective sail handling systems learnings perhaps from their sister company Geno but using this 3D sheeting wind hauler system which no heavy tracks needed on the deck nice and lightweight and you can really bring that jib sheet far inboard uh, for tight sheeting angles again the, the uh, main sail itself on a bridle here no traveling needed and all the lines brought back well the sheets brought back both the Genoa sheets self-tacking if you've got the self-tacking jib and the main sail sheets brought back to the two winches by the wheels standard you have a single coach roof winch or the optional second coach roof winch as well to handle the rest of the running rigging so if you ever want a good testament as to why a code zero is a good option to take perfect now sailing on the Oceanus 34.1 in about 10 to 12 knots of breeze and we're making about 7 to 8 knots and it's pretty good fun. And for those that still want one, an asymmetric as well. This is a lot of fun, reaching along. 13 knots true wind speed, making seven and a half to eight knots. Flat water sailing, t-shirt and shorts. Oh, that's why we enjoy our sport, isn't it? Interior of the 34.1, so how did they save 500 kilos over the 35? Well, it's slightly shorter, obviously, and it's also slightly narrower beam, but the volume is the same. So the beam is taken right out, the, the sofa berth is taken right out, and uh, using, using the hull shape where the uh, narrow wetted surface, but plenty of uh, sort of freeboard chine surface and full of bow volume, help creates help creates that extra space inside so you still end up with those double doors if you remember them on the on the 35 uh, and a large forward v-berth and then you know, get some stowage in this cabin in the wardrobe either side still got plenty of headroom up here Um, when I say plenty of headroom, I'm, I'm guessing about six foot two. And then in terms of options, this, in terms of options, this is the light oak finish and it's available in a dark walnut alky as well. These berths are long enough to sleep on, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, there we go. And then if you want to on the port side as well, 
Uh, there's a fill-in for the aft end of the port sofa berth. As it is, it doubles up as the, you know, an aft facing chart table area. So that drops down off that little bulkhead and then you've got your instrument panel there. Otherwise it's stowage underneath these saloon berths, apart from the hot water tank underneath this one. And then you move back into the compact L-shaped galley. Um, still, see compact, you know, they still managed to get a double bin under there. And a good deep fridge space and uh, yeah, raised locker space. And then otherwise, the only other option, so this is the three cabin version. If you wanted the two cabin version, which would have um, a larger shower area and a workshop basically, stowage area in that port aft cabin, you can see the moulding here. So this is where you'd, you'd lose that part because it would, be, it would become a shower area and you'd go through the shower area to get into um, that port aft stowage space. As it is, you've wet area and heads all in here on a single heads version, but you get a good size double cabin on the port side and again on the starboard side as well. So a nice size family cruiser, young family cruiser, all in all. And this one, if I didn't mention before, starts at 110,000 X fat. The boat we're on essentially is 165,000 with all the, for the first line option and all the sail upgrades. And this is also show you the engine space. The other thing to mention is like the 30.1 this is available with a swing keel uh, like the Sun Sun Odyssey range then so Mark Lombard design same sort of swing keel system where the keel would come up behind here and pivot from um, a pivot from a keel head using a hydraulic electric system and all that would change is that, that this saloon table is would be slightly wider but a really good option to have. I mean, it's it's massively boosted sales for the uh, Sun Odyssey smaller range, so the 349, the 380, and the 410. So I imagine it'll be a popular one on this too.